crystals all. Today we find ourselves equals. For are we not equally blessed by the reign of these monarchs? Can they trace their lineage back to Charlemagne? No. <laughs> Have I witnessed their exploits in Italy, Greece, or Jerusalem? Again, no. And could either of them spend an entire year in silence for any reason? Goodness, no. But we do indeed walk in a garden of their turbulence. Please rise if you are able and do homage to the crown of the Middle Kingdom. Marvel at their majesty. Take a gander at their grandeur. Their Majesties invited to their presence, Their Excellencies Flay and Griffin. Timothy and Elizabeth. And now the assembled parentages of the mid -realm. Thank you everyone for attending. Please take your ease. Their Majesties invited to their presence, Mava. So, Mava, thank you very much for taking this part in from us. I mean, on the youth list today, you uh, provided much support. And that can continue. Um, so I'm going to give her a little youth talk. I'm going to give her some heads up. So, we would like to invite the children that are here into court. So, any children that's here, please come up here. Oh, trust me, you want to come up here. <laughs> so, even if you want to take a sneak peek of what's in here, uh, I know there's llamas in here. And other stuffed animals. Coloring, jewelry. So, we have a quest for you. We are going to send Mava here away. Oh, don't chase yet. Uh, on the, and then the you show. will have to chase her and find what treasures are lying in that chest. <laughs> so, we are going to give you five seconds, Mava, to get out of here. Yeah. <laughs> and then you can go take Oh, that's five. Five. We're good. We're good. We're good. We're good. So, Your Excellencies, I understand that we had some tournaments today. I think we'd like for you to, to let us know what happened. Now, over to court, and Your Excellencies, Blake Griffin, Timothy, and Elizabeth. the range, but I saw a lot of arrows flying in the distance because of wind and hopefully some accuracy. Score song, Your Excellency. Please, tell us about the day. Well, so while we're out there exhausting things, we're there with us in spirit. Has it seen a smile for someone? So yes, today we had 28 archers uh, come out. Uh, we only kind of opened this up as a Pensic War practice, trying to simulate some of the typical shoots you might see at the Champions League. We had ground targets and friend foe targets, which uh, we didn't have any early birds, not many people got the worm. Uh, and we actually ended up with a clout shoot. Uh, this whole thing, day was apple themed. Uh, would it be okay if I was to recognize our top three shooters of the day? Please. And this is for the clout. For those who do not know what the clout is, the clout is where you have a target maybe 100, 115 yards away, and you launch the arrow up to try to get it to drop down onto the target or as close to the pin as possible. We judge our winners based off the distance that the closest arrow got to the pin. And I can say that the three people I'm going I'm to invite up if possible. Uh, to receive their bribes, all got within a foot 
of the pig. Uh, so, and I apologize if I get the uh, order incorrect, but Forrester Muldani came in third place, and it was a fight throughout the day. Hi, Muldani! Hi, Your Majesty. For that, since the day at our terrain it was all about apples, you keep what you kill. Oh. <laughs> 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 Get up right around eight to ten inches somewhere in that range, or it's closer. Huh? Your 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 closest was between eight and ten. Twelve inches. Twelve inches. Okay. Well, our simple ones. Orchard's lesion. I believe was it eight and or no, it's down to six, wasn't it? Or no, it was eight. It was an eight, right, it's John? Ten and a half for me. Ten and a half. See, I'm completely out of my head. <laughs> I believe there are some. Yeah, yes. Oh, look what we have here. Oh, four apples. Four apples. And <laughs> Mickey on that hill. Now, the one measurement I did not forget is that of the winner. Now, this person, wow, you can see him. The crowd went wild. And there was a crowd. There are pictures. You expect to see those uh, come up. But the top score of the day, at six and three quarters inches away from the pin, Molly of Flaming Griffin. She blew us away. She blew the target away. So not only she have apples, but there will be a belt favor, specifically in the hot skate tradition with the clutch shoe, horseshoes and hand grenades. <laughs> because you had the best clutch shoe of the day. Thank you. Uh, nice. You did awesome. <laughs>
Do it again. Yeah, it was greatly appreciated to be a pin cushion for everyone. And for a good cause. And for a very good cause. So thank you. Thank you. Okay. The generosity. Thank you very much. Yep. Answer. Was there any heavy fighting today? <laughs> we had two tournaments today. Uh, we had a novice tournament, uh, say one without a fighting award and not having previously won a tournament, and uh, that winner uh, was Barbosa. Receiving a $15 gift certificate to Candy Leather for your next project. Congratulations. Congratulations. All right, and for the grand tournament, uh, we have two, pri two prizes. Uh, first goes to the overall winner of the tournament, who was Sir Ingle. Yep. Yep. Oh, yeah. Foxy. is greatly appreciated. This helps to keep the society going by making sure that we still have practice spaces, by bringing in new people that are in the university. That's where the society grew out of, and you're helping to continue that tradition. So thank you very much. It's greatly appreciated. For Lord Alexander. Huzzah! Huzzah! Their Majesties invited into their court, Skolyov. Rob Grubinson? <laughs> um, and Ilva Skolyovskona. We, Wigthane and Nayessa, King and Queen of the Middle Kingdom, grant to Skolyov 
Last name. An award of arms. A newcomer to the SCA, from Viking reenactment, he has brought a wealth of knowledge and artistic ability that he shares openly and freely. Be it known that we also have seen the good deeds done by our subject, Ilva Skaliovskona. She came to us from Norse reenactment and shares her knowledge freely. But this we granted to her an award of arms. So they came from a reenactment group. <laughs> so, Maya, yes, one reenactment. Oh, okay. Well, awesome. Wait a minute, you guys run a group. We helped Kofans. Yeah. You co-founded a group. You co-founded a Viking reenactment group, and now you're blessing us with your skills, your abilities here too. I got a favor. So did I? Yep. So, um, so thank you very much for coming over um, and participating in the SCA as well. Um, I could see from this morning uh, when Ray and I ever got together the importance you guys have in your group, in your family. It shows your service, your love. It shows, and thank you. So, thank you very much. Get up here, honey. Get up here. Give me a hug. But you deserve this. Oh, here's the girls. Protect him. Keep him safe. The newest born in Lady of Fenra. and there was practices. And I partook in those and I made new friends. And among those friends, when we came back, they started whooping my butt. <laughs> and I'm okay with that because it keeps me on my toes. And I want to award this person an award of arms because of the participation he has and the, what he does for his barony, the barony of Red Spirits. William, up right stairs. Please attend. Let it be known to all that we, Nayasa, battle-born queen, and Wigfang, king by right of arms of the Middle Kingdom, have witnessed the service rendered by William of Red Spears as he, with a merry face, labors for his crown, his barony, and all those in need, and therefore are minded to make him an award of arms. <laughs> So not only does Her Majesty recognize the work that William has done throughout the COVID days and since then, but I routinely go out there and William is a face I see constantly. He's there to help us. He's there to fight. He's there to train. I've gone out to Red Spears to see the work that he's done out there. So William, you know, the Board of Barms is absolutely the bare minimum that we can do for you and we expect to see more. Thank you. Thank you. For Lord Billion, huzzah! Huzzah! Your Majesties, invite into their presence Contessa and Marie. You're right. Okay. Just a minute, you have to stand so sorry. How many of you named a Contessa and Marie? <laughs> To me. I can't leave them alone. You're, you're their designated adult. <laughs> your, your Excellency. Y'all are lucky to have a designated adult. Your Excellency, you can bring forth a rabble. <laughs> are you their only adult? I need help. You need help? I need help. My lord was injured protecting your lands and he's, he's in a bad way, but he's getting better, but he left me. Alone with them. <laughs> I, I need someone who's tenacious, who's tenacious, okay. tenacious who's a who's strong, who right. has experience. Who's, that's a need experience. Definitely experience. It's a leader. 
It was artistic. They need shoes and clothes and clothes. <laughs> and and I, I need someone who knows what it's like to be in the Middle Kingdom and how to behave correctly. <laughs> and, well, I need someone who's noble, and I just don't know who that would be. So, you, you need someone? You, you, I need a noble. You need a noble. I think we can fix this. I think I know exactly. Thank you so much. Thank you. Who can fix this? Do you, do we just want to. Yeah, no, I, Girl, you, can you please announce who, who Her Majesty thinks can fix this? Their Majesty is called before them Arthur Bear. Apparently, you're the next adult. <laughs> <laughs> nobles and peers, let it be known that we, Wigthane, king by right of arms of the Middle Kingdom, and Naessa our queen, send greetings, for as much as it is the privilege of the crown to recognize certain nobility, and we have seen such nobility in Arthur Bear, and are pleased to bestow upon him the title Baron of Our Court. and the leadership and the skills that you have. So we thought it was the right and proper thing to do this. Majesty's invited to their court, Sir Cyrus of Cleflands. Hey, Sirius! That's you, buddy. Hi, sir. Far and wide proclaim that we, Wigthane and Naessa, king and queen of the Midrealm, are pleased to grant Sirius Chad Whoopson the award <laughs> of the Purple Fret for his constant, consistent work in the Barony of Cleflands, serving as marshal in charge for multiple events, assisting with setup and tearing down their events and practices serving feasts and retaining for royalty. We are pleased to award him the award of the Purple Front.
princess once. And when I was princess, I uh, had a melee team uh, because my husband, his majesty, felt I needed to be protected on the field. I don't know who he thought he was dealing with, but here I was. You needed protection, your majesty. You needed protection. I think you need to, I think you need to figure out who helped you. Well, that's fine. To appease my husband, I tasked your serious baby team. Some of them are not here. One of them will be here in a shenanigan way, but that's fine. <laughs> Have you met me? <laughs> I have not seen you. Chris! Where are you? I need you up here. Sir Haggis is not here. He was amongst them. There was a Sergeant Morales, but I need you to stay where you are. Do not come up here yet. I have other plans for you, my sir. Oh, Kristoff is here! Kristoff was also! It is Kristoff. <laughs> So they have exemplified the ideals which we strive to uphold, and therefore do we wish to acknowledge them in a fitting and seemly manner, with some visible token of our esteem. We are minded, therefore, to give them a royal augmentation of arms in recognition of their deeds. It shall be a golden llama. That's truly registered within the society. Right. That's Christoph right here. Christoph is right in front of you. Christoph? Do you not see Christoph? I have too many of these. I should have organized these better. This one I know is yours, sir. Thank you all for doing everything you have done. And welcome to Contabernium Shenanigans! <laughs> Out immensely, you know, from 
on the other side of the lakes, of these mighty lakes to the north. Wait, there's other side of the lakes? There is. <laughs> See, you can't read, I don't know geography. If I could have the lava sewing group, I tend. King by the kingdom, and may us of our queen do much appreciate the wonderful service that the Lama Sewing Group have given us. Sewing many pieces of guard for us throughout our reign, they have exemplified the ideals which we strive to uphold, and therefore do we wish to acknowledge them in a fitting and seemly manner with some physical token of our esteem. We are invited to give unto them a royal augmentation of arms in recognition of their deeds. It shall be a golden lava incorporated into their arms and duly registered with the society. Some of you already have this lava no. from a shenanigan some years ago. We'll call it the How I Make Broadest Cry shenanigan. <laughs> no? I'll make one token. I will not. I'm going to make more for all of you. But I wanted to be sure to count. I'm assuming there's more. This is everybody. I love you guys. You made us look fantastic. And they made a scarf for when we stepped out. Like, we are not going to be naked later. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> so, thank you very much for clothing us and the belts and the pouches as being super supportive of all of our shenanigans. appreciate the faithful service of both from barefooted have given us giving everything and everyone together at both wars to create scrolls for her majesty's contubernium shenanigans she hath exemplified these ideals which we have strived to uphold and therefore do we wish to acknowledge her in a fitting and seemly manner with some visible token of our esteem we are minded to give unto her a royal augmentation of arms in the form of a llama <laughs> We be a small coach of Bernie. Uh, by the way, uh, we provide um, morale, <laughs> just so you know. And when the scribes for Gulf Wars, they took care of my Doe's Grace, they took care of a few other awards that we gave out, uh, and the royal occultation, I said, if, they, if, the, if the scribes can't get to it, don't worry about it. You can always get it done later. And this one went, oh, no, 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 I got free time. At Gulf Wars, they created personalized scrolls for each and every person we gave a royal augmentation to. And I cannot thank you enough. Majesties call forth Duke Kellick McCormick, Master of the Laurel. Oh, you, Grace. Grace. We, we've seen a lot. 
Ask it if it be a right and proper thing, it shall be yours. I would ask that you elevate my apprentice, Call forth the candidate. Baron Edward Brackenberry, present yourself before their majesties. He who approacheth, deem you him worthy of this noble period. Yea, verily, yea. Hath he proven his skills in the arts? Yea, verily, yea. Then reveal him now to his sovereign majesties. Is there a royal peer who will attest to Edward's nobility? Please read it. Greetings to all from you've got the grace to the knight of the design master of the world, and have the intelligent line of yourself. Greetings to all. Greatly sad to me that I cannot be with you on the dust day. However, I am honored to speak for the royal peer today. I have known Edward for some time. Always have I admired his commitment and purpose of society. He is the type of individual who believes in everyone's contribution to the value of the community and the community. Edward has worked diligently and passionately with David Perry, who has consistently demonstrated his integrity, dedication, and defense of responsibility. His unwavering commitment to the ideals of our organization is evident in every task he undertakes. Whether it be organizing events, entering newcomers, or participating in our music projects, Edward consistently goes above and beyond. Furthermore, Edward possesses exceptional leadership quality. He is adept at fostering collaboration and inspiring others to drive for excellence. His ability to communicate effectively and enhance enables him to connect with individuals with diverse backgrounds, fostering inclusive and welcoming environment for all. In addition to his contemporary skill as a writer, Edward also is entirely devoted to his His strong work ethic and shipping talent and all public skills will make him a valuable asset to his work. It is with great confidence that I commend Edward to the order of the world. His dedication, integrity, and ethics make him a truly outstanding individual who will undoubtedly continue to make significant contributions to any endeavor he is involved in. I am very proud to understand and welcome to call him a brother to the realm of the heart of Is there a member of the chivalry who will attest to Edward's courtesy and chivalry? I, Sir William Ransom, Knight of the Mid Realm, speak for my squire, Edward Grant. Edward has been my squire for more than 20 years, studying the code of chivalry and always, always upholding the highest level of behavior and courtesy. For me, Edward has been my friend far longer than that. Mm -hmm. He's always been a great friend to me, and I trust him with everything that I have. When my sons were born, Edward became my godfather. Only to stand in there in my place. Edward has faithfully served the kingdom as the third baron of the Pokemon. He was the archery champion at Pentrick. And he served as the winter arts and science champion at I don't think anyone has spent more than a moment with Edward. Recognizes that this man has all the knightly virtues and full courage, strength, simplicity, generosity, honesty, most important, loyalty. But what good are the other uh, chivalric virtues without a direction to the He has only directed them for the kingdom. Edward's been an exceptional, exceptionally loyal player to me. It's not just the simple loyalty of blind faith following someone without regard to his understanding of pain, but a faithful and well reason 
carrying all his virtues. Supporting those. When he was stoned in instead of to uh, be the there at platforms, he knew that the requirements of the field would be directly to the head of the field. Like from the time that did our bones appeal to each other. After agonizing over this situation, he consulted with me again with the king. After some consideration, he requested that I release him to his field. Today I again release him from his foot on guilty in anticipation of his elevation. There was nothing more than stand beside him, a brother here. Both of us is the right angel. The Majesties, this is a faithful and loyal man. This is carefully to the same time. It is wise and deliberate, and he will advise you well. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Is there a member of the Laurel who will attest to Edward's arts and sciences? I am Master Millicent de Bear, and I will claim that matchless honor to speak for Baron Edward. Your Majesties, gentle populace, before you kneels the most stubborn man I have ever known. <laughs> Person that he meets. 
This is a quality of a fear that cannot be ignored in Tixus. Not ignored. He is my peer in every way. I am delighted to speak on behalf of my work. Thank you, Master. Is there a member of the populace who will speak on Edward's behalf? That honor is mine, your majesties. I am Forrester Cadvin of the Autumn Wood, Middle Kingdom historian, and your most faithful servant. May I address your populace? Yes, please. Before the dragon throne kneels Edward Brackenberry, as he has knelt before the crown of the Middle Kingdom for, as its true servant for over a quarter century to be elevated to the Order of the Laurels. He is the third baron of the barony of the Clefflands. He was twice a royal champion. He was Clefflands armor champion. He was Clefflands archery champion three times in a row. He was twice a regional officer, and he is a companion of three grant level orders, the Dragon's Heart, the Greenwood Company, and the Evergreen. He created the Honorable Company of Embroiderers, which now has over 300 participants from across the known world. <laughs> 39 Midrealmers have had their work paneled and judged by the Guild, including me. And the only things I have personally ever sewn have been at Edward's optimistic and very careful instruction. Peers of the society are the exemplars of their fields. They are role models whose qualities are to be emulated, for they represent the best of us. When I think of Edward Brackenberry, the quality I think of most is diligence. As many of us do, he has many hobbies, but he has never been content to just learn how to do something. He seeks to master the thing, no matter what it is. Many have seen his incredible skill at embroidery, but that skill came through years and years of patient practice. This same quality shows in his calligraphy, illumination, garb making, my hood, armored combat, and archery. He has excelled in all of these things, not because he was born being good at them, but because he strives ever to be better today than he was the day before. He has walked the path of the scholar all his life, always seeking improvement in his skill, always hungering for more knowledge always teaching what he knows to those who ask for guidance. And this applies no matter if the implement he is holding is a sword, a bow, or an embroidery needle. Edward is a lifelong student, as all good teachers are. But today, you will become a master. Thank you. Thank you, Forrester. Summon our most noble order of the law. Master and mistresses of the law, present themselves before their majesties. Masters and mistresses of the law, is it, is it your opinion that Edward Brackenberry, for his skill in the art of embroidery, is worthy of elevation to the order of the law? Aye! Edward, right by flow of your service, is the society of responsive to the wishes of your peers. We are resolved to create you, Master of the Lord. As the world has ever stood for excellence, so do we give it to you as a symbol for the mastery of your art. Therefore, will you, Edward, give us your word to continue to fulfill the requirements set forth in the government of this order, as you must most surely have till now. Will you increase your labors nobly, increase your talents as the fifth one of your rank, and seek to disseminate your talents and abilities throughout the society. You promise to train any dependents you may have to do likewise. Is there a medallion? Yeah. 
Edward, take this from our hand, this symbol of nobility and a token of our esteem. Wear it proudly so others may recognize you for your skills, your services, and we have recognized it this day. Is there a wreath? Wear this wreath as a symbol of your excellence. Is there a cloak? Edward, wear this cloak in an outward token of your new station. Edward, are you prepared to take your own? This do we hear, and shall never forget, nor fail to reward that which is given. Guilty with love, service with honor, and oath-breaking with justice. Master Edward Brackenberry, the newest companion of the Order of the Laurel. our queen, knowing the excellence and expertise in the arts and sciences, Edward Brackenberry hath displayed in the art of embroidery and the generosity of spirit which he has shared, our minded to create him a companion of the order of the world, to be in all places numbered a peer of our realm, with all privileges and responsibilities, and rights thereto appertaining with the right to bear arms, letters, and patents within the society. <laughs> Master Edward Brackenberry! Huzzah! Oh, yellow 
that, yeah, I remember that really long offensive round. Yes, absolutely. Uh, that was really challenging. I, uh, I think I jumped back probably about a dozen times at least, because uh, I don't like any stat that you guys were trying to stand with the rep at. So, uh, the, the Cavendish knot is absolutely something that you deserve. You showed your prowess to me firsthand. Uh, I have I probably have got some head marks here that come from it. So, congratulations and thank you very much. Or Luisa, huzzah! <laughs> So Her Majesty has this thing with the army, I guess. Um, I like to yell. She likes to yell. She likes to fight. She likes to yell more. And so we see this quite often that she's out there on the list, yelling away, out there in the field, yelling away. And I don't think the people over here have heard enough of your yelling. So I'm going to come over here so they can hear me for a change. <laughs> oh, I can be loud, Your Majesty. But I, I do think, though, that we might have a problem. You see, I, I look at all these people here, and these are great people. We have a new court right here. So we have a new Laurel. We have some people that got pretty We've got some pretty shenanigans. Oh, but the why does this have to do with my yelling? But I think there's some leadership skills here that I see in the audience. I see it everywhere. But I don't think that we've recognized it quite yet. I have no idea what you're talking about. I, Your Majesty, I don't know what you're talking about. I know what I need to do. I need to go to one of my knights, one of my knights that's local to me, and ask him something. Oh, that's your business. All right. <laughs> so, Sir Silverthorne, you're here. You understand leadership. You led, you led regions in our army, didn't you? I have, Your Majesty. Well, you know what it takes to be a leader in our army. I do, Your Majesty. Well, is there something we should do? I do. What, what's that? Well, I have been traveling this spring a great many places, and in that, we elected a new con amongst my people. A con? What What would this con do? Well, while we were electing this new person, I also got an opportunity to meet with some of my other brothers. And one of them gave me a token. Oh, a token? What a is... token that I think would solve your problem. But I am unable to pass it along, so I would ask for you to do me the honor. Oh. I like this token. I think this is a token Her Majesty needs to see first. Your Majesty! Sir Silverthorne here. I, I, was, I was here. Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> But I think this token needs to be passed along. I think we can do that. Red Company! Fall away! That's how you be low. <laughs> thank you, Your Majesty. So your majesty, I see a great number of leaders here. I see a great number of red company here. But one thing I don't see enough of is I don't see enough of the next level of leadership. So I think we need to fix that. By all means. Morales, come up here. <laughs> Woo! Woo! See, here and read the words of Wigan by right of arms of the Middle Kingdom, and Nyasa, warrior queen of the Middle Kingdom. The leadership and training of these warriors is essential to the strength of the army, and we have witnessed such excellence in our subject, Morales. Therefore, we do wish him to recognize him as companion of the Order of the Gold Mace. Morales might not necessarily be the most vocal of leaders that we have, but Morales is for sure one of the most stalwart leaders that we have in the army. 
He is on the Unbelted Champions team year after year. Locally, at meetings, he is training our new fighters. I get to see him every week doing all this service and all this leadership. So he is absolutely deserving of the Order of the Gold Mace. I am going to have you have right here. Because I've got that. Ladies, 
the end of our court and we still have more business to, to attend to but we'd like to call forth any newcomer for if this was their first royal court or first event uh, here in the Midrock. Please come forward. One of the things that we like to do as a tradition within the Midrock is to acknowledge the people that have just come and we do this, do this with a cup. We give you a cup that's empty so you may come and get it filled from the members of our populace. We hope to see you at another event 
with the same cups so that we may fill your cup and hear the stories that you have from your time with the SCA. So that way we can share with you what we have and what you have. So please. So, thank you very much for attending today. These cups have been donated by the generosity and the fairies throughout the mid. So, we hope you enjoy them. He has been spoken to by the wonderful pockets we have this week. Mm -hmm. For being a knight is about serving you. And I believe she has done this and understands this. I would ask you mm -hmm. to grant the honor of the Virgin of Pontus. Ask if it's right, proper thing, shall be yours. Sorry. I would beg that Sai be entered into the noble order of the Call forth the candidate. Fair Majesty, summon forth, Sai, Indian, Donica. Thank you, Brandon. Do you want to? I'm going to say, 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 I will swear for my honor to uphold the night in the shoes that I lay beneath the town. When I was young, I watched the night so bright, and their armor so bright, and their glory brighter still. My hands were small, the night seemed to lie around me. I was the whole man of me, I set out to gain my skill. I will wait on the chain. A gold I wear upon me by the pride of the cross. About my body bound by the spurs on my heels. I will spare upon my honor to uphold the knightly virtues till I lay beneath the ground. When I was raised, I stood before my sovereigns, and I knew him to just like the night took. My heart is full, to my best I shall endeavor. To defend the dream forever, which first took me toward my home. Is there a member of the uh, royal parish who will attest to size and ability? Your Majesty, I will. I am Elizabeth Mortimer, Viscountess of the Middle Kingdom and of Eldermere. People say, what is nobility? And some would say, it's a matter of rank. In which case, I could say to you, she is a countess. And we would all nod sagely, and I would go on my merry way. But fundamentally, nobility is about a person's character, virtues, and morals that they espouse. 
at the core of nobility are the ideal of compassion, selflessness, and caring for others. Sai so demonstrates this as she sat and sits as Baroness and takes care of the local people. We see this as she sat as queen and took care of the kingdom and the people of the kingdom. We see this as in the darkest of the dark times. She brought light to fighters across the known world as she <laughs> gave up her practice times so that we could be better. Your Majesties, this woman is noble and I commend her to you. Thank 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 you. <laughs> Your Majesties, that is my singular honor this day. I am Tonus Van Driel, Baron of your Barony of Sternfeld, Master of the Laurel. In corpora, in the tenets of knighthood, of chivalry, it is necessary for one who ascends to that accolade to be a patron of the arts, See, for six months, Queen of War and Song, elevating the Bardic community to a level seldom seen in any kingdom, giving them a platform that is much appreciated, and she is much loved by that community. Baroness of Bardic, Countess Cantorum, she is most certainly a patroness. She is also a participant. But the quest to laurel, the quest to mastery in anything, is not something to just be done. It is not something to just be achieved. It is a path fraught not with just simple victories, but with pain, with frustration. The phrase, practice makes perfect, is a lie. Practice makes consistent and if you consistently do it wrong, you get really good at doing it wrong. <laughs> Mastery comes from a step back. The humility that only comes with learning from failure, from learning from mistakes, taking a step, reassessing where you're at, and making a conscious step forward, always striving to be better, and finding those who will stand next to you, who will help lift you, and you have done that. And as you step forward, remember all that helped lift you. For as a peer, your job is to lift others. And I have no doubt in my heart that you will rise to this and shine as a beacon of ship. Your Majesties, I wholeheartedly support this elevation on behalf of the Order of the Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Your Excellency. Thank you. Is there a member of the Order of the Pelican who will speak on Sive's service? Hi, Dr. Srebaka, Lady of the Row. Order of the Pelican is here to speak for Kamen Sive. I had the opportunity to watch Sive grow from the first day of practice to her inner way to Baroness and then to Queen and now to Knight. Through the journey, she brought youth and fun to the Barony, and then while Baroness, she kept the Barony engaged with fun videos, online barbecues, virtual armory, and other activities. At the same time, she served the kingdom and the society by entertaining them with her song, voice, and voice during the two year struggle that we used through. As queen, she brought her song to war and raised an army of arts to entertain the populace. She enjoyed to so many others her appreciation and participation in the things they love within the society. She is known through the known world not only as a fighter, but as a trainer and an inspiration, as an example of what is possible when you decide to follow your dream. I look forward to seeing her strive for the 
to strike shortly enough, she will be a wonderful potato for the celebrating as a night nice candidate. Thank you, Your Grace. Thank you, Your Grace. Uh, is there a master of defense who will attest to size courage and honor? I will do that. I am Duchess Catrin Bronwyn of Gloucester, master of the Laurel, master of the Melian, master of defense. I have had the privilege of meeting Cy Sloan these many years ago when she was but young in this society. And I have watched her joy and tenacity and courage and honor and everything with the tokens the night of the society. She is the most amazing woman I know. She, she has, she exhibits everything that a peer strives to be. Standing for them when they were on the throne for her and Louis was it brought joy and, and everything new to me again. And, and it made the SCA reignite so many people. And I cannot express to you my joy to see this done and to see her recognized. Everyone here has said everything I was going to say. <laughs> and, and I cannot reiterate it more. And I thank you for acknowledging her grace, her wisdom, her courage, her honor. Thank you for acknowledging everything that you said. Thank you, your grace. After hearing words from these noble gentles, we feel that we need to summon forth the order of the chivalry. Their Majesty, summon the order of chivalry! Noble sir! Having heard the words of these nobles, it's in your judgment that Sive is worthy to be numbered among our chivalry's prowess, loyalty, and courtesy. Aye. Grace, I think he has a question still with her. Indeed. You have been my squire for four and a half years. You have brought great joy and great education to me. I look forward to you being a knight and continuing in my education. But I would ask and give you, he'll be back to you and ask for my health and chain back from So I've right mindful of the prowess of the field responsive of the wishes of your peers, we are minded to make you a knight. Know that to wear the belt and the chain of a knight, hold a sacred trust. That obligation of knighthood will demand your efforts every moment of your life. A knight of the society must be respectful of all religions, never offending the faith of another. A knight must respect all those who are weak or defenseless, whether because of age, infirmity, poverty, or vow, and be steadfast in defending. A knight must love their kingdom and fulfill faithfully her feudal duties to their baron and to her king. Her word must be dependable beyond doubt or question. She must never flee from the face of her foes. She must be generous to all, 
and always and everywhere, she must be the champion of the right and the good. The laws of the society and the customs of the kingdom require that a knight be proud, as you have demonstrated upon the field. That a knight be courteous, as you have shown yourself to be, and as these nobles attest. And that a knight be loyal to her kingdom and the society. Besides, do you then desire to accept the burden of knighthood and swear fealty to the crown? Is there a belt? Scythe, wear this belt as a token of your prowess. Is there a chain? Indeed, your men. That's wrong. That's what you to back. Too many things. This is a fashion of the chains that Morgan first wore, and that each of his squires and all of those in the household wear as they fit. I understand that there are more chains for you. Oh, that one. Oh, that's like Your so Excellency, sir. <laughs> the Middle Kingdom is blessed with many ancient and honorable traditions. This chain was passed to me by Her Excellency, Sir Fern de la Forêt. It went for me to Sir Jocelyn. I took up this chain and wore it, and when the time was right, I passed it to her grace, Elena of Beckingham, who took it and wore it in her turn. And she would be here today if she could to pass it on to you, but it has passed me with the honors. We bid you to wear this chain, wear it boldly, and remember where our going. And pass it on when I tie you <laughs> So, I wanted to make something special for Cyrus. I've been shown this many times in its creation. It has the name of every female knight in the society. Yeah. It also has the chivalric virtues. This man created this over weeks and weeks. And it's made with love. In their basement. <laughs> Side, wear these chains as a token of your fealty. Now are there spurts? There are again. That's a lot of There's no lineage with these spurs. Mm -hmm. Side, wear these spurs as an outward token of your new station. I think it is a fine play. I think it will serve you well. Bear your sword with strength, so disposing your heart to goodness 
that you never use it to injure anyone unjustly, but always use it to defend the just and the right. Now swear homage to the crown. I here swear fealty and do homage to the crown of the Middle Kingdom. To ever be a good knight and true, reverent and generous, shield of the weak, obedient to my liege lord, foremost in battle, courteous at all times, champion of the right and the good. Thus swear I, beside Indian Danica. This do we dare, and shall never forget, to be your liege lord, guilty with love, valor with honor, and oath breaking with justice. <laughs> <laughs> Sign. Here are these clothes and no others. The remembrances of those given and received in remem remembrance of your liege and obligation. Be thou a good knight. Christ. Scythe, as is tradition in the Middle Kingdom, you will accept one last blow on answer as a sign of humility from myself. Here. Congratulations, <laughs> Sir Sod. <laughs> <laughs> Royal Letters Patents, 
that caused the great seal of the Middle Kingdom to be here unto a fixed. Members of the chivalry, please take the new side of it. Guys, you're happy. Oh, this is it. Um, oh, you're very. 